Hey you guys, another video on AirDroid. Now it's quite a different video this one because AirDroid in the past has always been an Android uh, application and this morning I received an email from AirDroid to beta test their version for iOS so I've got test flight installed on my iPhone 7 Plus went into test flight, uh, test flight put the code in for AirDroid downloaded the beta version and I've been beta testing it uh, today uh, to see what I think of it and I'm going to show you basically the difference between Android and uh, the iOS version but also give you some of my views and uh, show you basically how it works so basically once you've got AirDroid on your iOS device open AirDroid first of all you get a few options to connect you can create an account uh, you can install AirDroid on your MacBook or iMac as well as on your iOS device and, and connect that way or you can connect purely by using a browser now the browser method is quite easy it's very very quick the way it works, as long as you're on the same Wi-Fi network on your iPhone or your iPad as your iMac or your MacBook, it will all work seamlessly over your home Wi-Fi network, no internet needed. So you're only governed by the speed of your router, which in these uh, this day and age are really, really quick. <clears throat> so I'll briefly go out through how you connect. At the top of the screen, you can see a web address, HTTP, and then you get an IP address. Each one of these addresses will be different for every device you use. So what I suggest you do is open a browser, type in the address that you see on the top of your, the uh, application on AirDroid on your iOS device. Type it exactly as you see it. You don't need to type www, it's just HTTP colon forward slash forward slash and then the IP address exactly with all the uh, points in the right place. Once you get it typed in, and once you get it working and connected, I suggest you save that as a bookmark and having a bookmark bar where you can easily get access to it. That will save a lot of messing around in the future rather than type this uh, IP address every single time. <clears throat> if you're using multiple devices, i.e. an iPhone and an iPad, you'll have different IP addresses. All you need to do is then is rename uh, your shortcuts to iPad and iPhone or whatever you want to rename them to. And you've got easy access. So once you've got this screen up and uh, up and running on uh, your iOS device. No need to sign in, like I say, just make sure you're on the same Wi-Fi network. Click on the link on the top and you'll connect. I'll quickly show you the Android version, show you how it looks, but we won't connect to an Android device. On the Android version, you see lots of things that you can connect and share to. Android's quite open, so there's, it's a lot easier to share stuff on Android. You get a barcode in the middle that you scan with your Android device and you get some information on the right hand side of the screen, pretty similar to the iOS device uh, version. So we'll go over to the bookmark for the iOS version. As soon as you click on it, <clears throat> you're prompted on your iPhone or your iPad within 28 seconds to reject or accept the connection. So the setup is very, very simple. There's no messing around once you've initially got your web page set up and saved. So all you do is click connect and you can see it's a very, very fast connection. It's working over your Wi-Fi and your home situation, your office situation, whatever you're using. And you can see on the left-hand side of the screen now, we get a lot less applications than we did on the Android version. This is more down to Apple than it is down to the makers of uh, AirDroid for iOS. On the right-hand side of the screen, you can see we have iPhone 7 Plus. A bit of information gives you a rough idea of how much free space. Underneath that, you get a toolbox, so you can upload to file, URL, or clipboard. And this is your drag-and-drop area where you drag and drop things into. On the Android version, you can actually use SMS from this area you can actually make phone calls but obviously within ios and uh, os x you've got the option to do hand off and make phone calls and sms's in other ways so obviously that's not applicable but we'll go into the uh, file system that's included the file system that's included is integral within the airdroid application that means that if you transfer files over so work file pdf uh, documents word document whatever format you're working in they will be actually populated within the airdroid application now on android it's not so you can actually save them into documents you can move them around you've got a full file system that works across the whole system that's much more open it does work fine on ios if you know the restrictions and you know how to use it it, it works really well i have no problem using work files on ios they open natively on iPad, iPhone, you can edit them, print them without adding third-party applications. So all in all, it's quite a good system as long as you know uh, the limitations that you're working with or the route to take to accomplish what you want to do on iOS. It's, it's, it's all included, it's just a different way 
from the way you're used to with a file management system on the Mac or on a Windows computer or for that matter on Android. So we'll quickly get into this, we'll click on photos and you can see straight away how fast the photos populate. You can, most people using iTunes via cable or a wireless connection will know that there's a lot of syncing going on. You've got to wait for the bar to go across the top. Even if you just sync in one file, it's quite convoluted and slow. Very, very fast way of doing things. Once you get this window open, you must remember that, uh, I'm not being condescending, but most people get confused with this. You must remember that your phone is a satellite device that you're uploading to. So imagine that your phone is a satellite device. You upload to your phone. You download from your phone to your MacBook or iMac. So anything that you want to take off your phone down to your MacBook, you would actually download and you would upload the opposite way. So you can see at the top of the screen you get different upload and download features. So this is quite confusing now because the upload is actually uh, shown uh, highlighted. So to upload to the phone which is actually not what we want to do we want to take a file from the phone so you can see all these files at the moment are actually on the phone so this particular photo you can see once you actually highlight over the photo you get the option to delete and once you get the option to delete if you press delete it will give you prompts on your phone do you want to delete this from your device and you can stop and don't allow and that's quite a good thing to stop you accidentally deleting stuff that you don't want to delete if you want to download this file from your phone your phone is the upload don't forget so you're downloading from the phone which is a satellite device to your macbook you simply hit the download on the bottom see on the left hand side in chrome it's actually downloaded <clears throat> and that will be stored on your download folder on your mac if i go across and double click on it it will show the downloaded file on the screen it's actually on the computer now so we can close that if you don't want to download things but you want to see them in a bigger format so you've got stuff on a phone maybe an iphone 6 or an iphone 7 a smaller screen and you want to see what your photos look like without downloading them before you edit them or whatever on a larger screen and you haven't got an apple tv to cast it to or you're not casting to a smart tv Without downloading, you can simply double click on the image and you can see it full resolution on your screen from your phone. So that's quite handy as well. Going over to the video options, again, you'll see how fast the videos populate from the phone to the screen. So I'll click on the video. The videos that are all on the phone are now shown on my MacBook. If I want to play it natively on the MacBook, instead of downloading, I just play. And it's playing remotely from my iPhone to my Mac so I can stop that so you can see it's quite a a quick way of doing things even if you're previewing before you actually delete things or you're checking out photos you've taken you want to come home and quickly look without cables or anything you pull your phone out you pull your MacBook out click on AirDroid and you're on and you can check and uh, see what files you've got uh, same again if you want to download that file from your phone onto your MacBook you do the same thing you just press download it will go into your download file and you can move it around you can put it in a folder transfer it to a pen drive or whatever you want to do uh, so all in all pretty good files like I say the built-in file manager you've got transfers uploads uh, and a main log that's probably some uh, code that's built in uh, so again you can manage things from this area on the uh, AirDroid on uh, the web browser, so we'll close that down quickly. If you want to put a file up onto your iPhone uh, to edit and take with you, simple process again, so we'll have to just move the screen out of the way and find a file. <clears throat> we can see we've got a document file on the screen there. So if I drag that document file down, drop it in the window, and this is in Word document format, <clears throat> that file's transferred over. And you can see now on the application you get, pretty much as you do throughout iOS, you get notification as a uh, a new uh, file waiting so you click on there and you can see straight away now we've got the file natively within the AirDroid app now on Android it will be stored in your documents and you can move it around excuse me through other applications if I click on the file that we've just put on the iPhone you can see I've actually got it there and you can't do a great deal with it so really if you want to edit it you've got to move it into another application now what I suggest you do all the time with this if you this if you click on the bottom of the screen you've got the share option button at the bottom of the screen <clears throat> what I tend to do is use iFiles for all my uh, work files so save to iFiles 
iFiles you can download from uh, the App Store, it's readily available. In your local files within iFiles, I've got documents, music, photos, videos and work. And within them I can save different files in all different formats and have them stored in a neat order that I want them into. So I can go into documents, choose documents where I want to save it to and click save. And that will now take it into documents folder. so we can go done there, we can come out of there and we just check in iFiles that is copied across. I'll just get that out of the way. Bear with me a minute. And go back to local files. We're going to documents, and you can see the folders in documents. Now, once you've got it into iFiles with all your other documents, you can open it in any obviously email, open in, print, save as a PDF, or delete. So you can open it in another application if you want to edit that. So you can open in a Word Word uh, application that you've got stored on your iOS device. You can natively print it out from either the AirDroid application or iOS or iFiles, I should say. But for me to keep things how I want them, rather than load them into the cloud, keep them locally and obviously store them in the cloud for safekeeping, uh, it's a good way to go to move them over into iFiles once you've got them in there. What I will say is photos and videos, when you actually transfer them over, they natively will appear in your camera roll. So within the application, it's designed. So if you take, uh, say you've got a movie that you want to take with you on an iPad, on a flight or whatever, and you upload it to your iPad, it will also automatically populate in your videos within your camera roll. So videos and photos automatically populate. Music, this is the big bugbear with iOS that I have at the moment. On Android, you can transfer music from anywhere. It will automatically show up in any music directory that you're using, any music application. So natively, for instance, on a Galaxy device, you can open the music player, and if you providing you've transferred it over, it will show in that application and also show in third party applications. On iOS, you're pretty much limited to iTunes at the moment if you want to get your music transferred over uh, directly into your music folder, you need to use iTunes. <clears throat> what you can do with this as a, a roundabout method, it's not brilliant, but it does work. You can see I've got a music file on the screen there, drag and drop file. <clears throat> you have to bear with me, I've got a bit of a cold. Uh, we can drag and drop that file into the drag and drop area and you can see we're copying a, a music file over this is a non copyright music file so we can actually click on this and uh, not get any repercussions off uh, YouTube so we'll drag and drop it over it's transferring over to the device and again it will store natively within the AirDroid application on uh, your iPhone or your iPad so we open up AirDroid and you can see now we've got two files in there. We've got the document file that transferred over and we've also got the uh, music file. Now, I've not played around with this too much in Clear Records there and I don't know whether you could create different folders within the AirDroid, Air, AirDroid web application on your iOS device so you can avoid using iFiles. But at the moment, <clears throat> it seems that they all store in uh, one area. So the problem we've got now is you can play this file no problem. It will play using a QuickTime player, but you can see there's no, it's pretty basic. You get a basic graph across the bottom. So it's basically like an audio file showing you what's playing. This is a chunky there's no, I've not tried it with a, a file with artwork, so I don't know whether artwork would pop up there. But again, if you wanted to play a certain amount of music and you wanted, you had your headphones on, it's much easier to use the Apple application to play your music rather than uh, try and do it in other ways using a, a third party application. Another way you can go is you can click on, again, let's say to iFiles, we can go to a music folder within iFiles, we can choose that folder and then we can go save. <coughs> we can go back out of there, we can go into our iFiles folder, go to local files, go into music, and you can see the files are saved into the music folder. Now the problem we've got again is the the actual application for playing the music it's all there but it's it won't populate music from your apple music so each each music that you've got is separate you could play music from here but i suppose once it's playing your quick access from the bottom of the screen doesn't always work with third party applications and it's all in all a bit of a convoluted mess that apple won't let you have the option to have your music that you put on your device populated within the one decent application that you've got on there to play your music uh, seamlessly with artwork and all the rest of it. So that's the only problem I can find. Like I say, 
most of the applications that I use on iOS devices, I do edit some video on this uh, iPhone 7 Plus because it's so fast, it's incredible. It's a lot quicker actually than my MacBook for editing uh, 4K uh, video. So this method, as opposed to using a USB stick with a, a lightning connector one end and then swapping it around and transferring it, it's quite a quick method of using and uh, transferring files. I did a quick test earlier on and on the quick test I transferred a 1.2 gig file from the MacBook over to the uh, iPhone. It took about three minutes. The same transfer going back the other way took about two and a half minutes. So, and that's over a Wi-Fi connector. So I, I don't think that's overly bad to transfer a file back and forwards. It was quite quick. So it's a brief overview of this. I haven't gone into it in too much depth. It's just giving you an idea of what's to come. But for me at the moment, because I already use Zerdroid for Android, I find it quite useful and I quite, quite like the interface, how, how snappy it is to get into things, how quick it is to drag and drop stuff around and move stuff. I'm sure in the future that there may be a workaround for the music if Apple let AirDroid do. It's a massively popular application on Android, so I'm hoping it's going to be pretty much the same on iOS. Anyway, if you have got any questions and you want to ask me anything, I'll be testing this further uh, for myself, so I'll have some more information. I'll be obviously finding out little things that this does that I haven't found out at the moment and uh, I can give you information if you leave questions below. If you like the video and it's been useful to you or you want to know any more information about it, like I say, give me, write a question below and I'll try to answer. But give me a thumbs up, give me a like and I'll try and get more interesting videos that are useful in everyday technology actually in the near future. Again, thanks for watching. Sorry about the bad cold and the sore throat, but uh, cheers again.